The ability to look at things from different angles is a skill that is never superfluous, because often on a variety of issues and topics, we find ourselves inside the so-called information bubble, where everyone expresses the same point of view. Now it does not even matter whether it is correct or not. Let's try to shift the focus of our perception to the opposite in a seemingly obvious plot structure. Let's imagine that in the classic Star Wars, the narrative is told not from the point of view of the rebels and Jedi, but from the perspective of the Empire. It should be just as interesting. Let's feel like the Palpatines. So a new hope. We know very well that the famous Death Star began to be built far from the time of the meeting of Luke Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi in the desert of Tatooine. Strictly speaking, the superweapon was almost ready at the time of Revenge of the Sith. The classic story of the Death Star's design in no way addresses the reasons for its appearance. The Star Wars viewer gets the impression that the Empire simply wishes to destroy any rebels in the most inhumane way possible. Ant-Man's hope should have been built around a plot about an arms race between the Empire and the Republic, albeit an imaginary one. To lend weight to the plans for the Death Star, everyone should have been convinced that it was not just a weapon of retaliation, but a response to similar designs by the opposing side, funded by Alderaan. The existing storylines could have been rewritten quite convincingly from these positions. So Guerrera, who fought for his native Onderon, could be made out to be a terrorist opposed to imposing order. Obi-Wan's visit to the Death Star is supposed to be a diversion and battlefield reconnaissance, an attempt to sabotage the Resistance's enforcement of peace and order. Grand Moff Tarkin would then be the hero defending the frontiers of the Empire and destroying the funding centre for subversion. Even the suppression of the Jedi could be inserted here from the perspective of preventing destructive acts of destabilization. I'd even add a character whose parents died on, say, the same Onderon after an attack by Herrera's rebels into the plot. So much for the tough motivation to be in favor of the stormtroopers. The Empire strikes back. It gets even simpler from here. News of the arrival of another Jedi quickly sweeps the galaxy, and the Empire goes on high alert. By that time, the myth of extreme bloodthirstiness of lone warriors with lightsabers is already part of the compulsory school curriculum, and is absorbed literally with the milk of the mother. Darth Vader's heroic deed of curbing the Jedi bloodlust and standing up to Palpatine in the sacred task of defending the boundaries of order and justice is especially respected in the Empire. Vader's quest for repentance leads him to seek out the mysterious new Jedi, and the fact that the enemy is his own son strikes the great warrior to the core. At the last moment his hand trembles, and the rebel slips away. The hunt for pockets of resistance is just as easily overturned. Reconnaissance squads respond clearly to any signals, arriving quickly at suspicious dark corners, where any sprouts of extremism and separatism are burned out at the root. Since the essential part of the plot of the original trilogy was Han Solo, we will use him too. Only we will show the famous smuggler as a typical representative of organized crime and criminal spice trade. Lando Calrissian acquires in this case the flavor of a scout immersed in the galactic mafia. He finds out the secret connections of the rebels, finds out the sources of funding and replenishment of fuel and people. Return of the Jedi From a familiar perspective, the finale of Lucas's classic trilogy is the complete and unqualified ousting of the Empire into the zone of absolute undeniable evil. In a familiar line of events, the loss of the second Death Star, accompanied by the deaths of the Emperor, Darth Vader, Moff Jurgerod, and most of the Army Brass, finally unmasked the Empire's fascist desire for genocide. Uninvolved viewers may not know this, but fans of the saga know that Palpatine's death automatically launched Operation Ashes, a truly brutal plan to destroy several planets that were supporting the Resistance forces, and that operation was partially realized. It's hard to put it under any other light, but we know how to remake on the fly, right? So I'd start part three by having our hero become a fairly significant figure in the Empire's space fleet by now. This would allow him, and us along with him, to get as close to Palpatine and Vader as possible. For what purpose? To find out that the lust for power that Sidious has always accused the Jedi of having overpowered Darth Vader's strength and intelligence. Alas, he turned out to be a traitor who sided with Luke Skywalker and together father and son were able to destroy the true ruler who brought the light of order, justice and peace to all corners of the galaxy. 
This tragedy promises chaos to the world. The progressive regime and its benevolent ruler are overthrown by rebels hungry for destruction. As you can see by the heat of passion, anti-Star Wars, told from the perspective of the Empire, would not yield to the original. It would have been easy to insert a romantic line or a story arc with the hero overcoming the temptations of the free life. There would have been a lot of additions. But as it happens, for almost half a century, we have had only one point of view and do not want to change the picture of the world. Perhaps this is the right thing to do. Not even so. Of course it is right. But it is not superfluous to exercise imagination and fantasy. It's encouraged here. I hope that I have not bored you too much with my fictions. I promise that among the next materials there will certainly be a lot of concrete and unambiguous videos. About what? I don't know yet. I can only say one thing for sure. It will be interesting and unexpected as always. So don't forget to visit the channel more often. Let the war remain in the movies. Reality needs peace. See you later 